Panim, Nostum Cotidem de Nobis, Hodia Demitin Opus de Vitinosta, Siet Nostimitis de Pneprodus, Nostris et Nenos in Dicus in Tentationi, Sed Libera non Amado. Amen. Benedicti Omnipotens, Deus Pater et Filius Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Thank you all so much for your sympathy. Father, can I leave the details of the Requiem to you? Of course. And any other formalities to you, Doctor. Julien, see that there is some wine downstairs. I'm sure you will excuse me. Philippe. hate these things. Philip, be sure the Père Lassage vault is open. When your uncle Casimir died, nobody could find the key. What will you do, Mother? What every respectable widow should do. No, but uh, later. Oh, later. Of course. I shall get married. <laughs> Throw it in the canal Saint Martin after midnight last night. Not mine. <sighs> Maigre. Yes. Yes, Monsieur. Yes, Monsieur. Certainly. At once, Monsieur. All right. Take him away. Bring him back when he's ready to talk. And lose this horrible thing. Might be an idea to take him down to Morgue. Remind him what he did with it. What a case for a beautiful day. <laughs> and now, Luca, we have another one on our hands. From the Ministry itself. That's who telephoned just now. They've sent somebody around to see us. All very hush-hush. Maybe out there by now. Ah, monsieur. I've come to see a man called Megre. You mean Chief Inspector Megre? Yes. This way. Monsieur Cromier. Uh, how do you do? I imagine the minister telephoned you. Mm -hmm. I'm from the Quai d'Orsay. Not another body in the cloakroom? The foreign office, not the railway station. Oh, well, do sit down. Madame? Mademoiselle. Monsieur? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is highly confidential. Well, you can't see that we're not disturbed. Oh, but of course, Breton. What is Mademoiselle? Uh, she is the housekeeper to the Comte of Saint Hilaire. Mm. Okay. Well, Rome, 1923, London, 27, Buenos Aires, 32. Oh, yes. a diplomat. I'm not seeing his memoirs in the shops. The first two volumes. The third will never be written. Mm -hmm. This morning, Mademoiselle Varieux, who has worked for the Comte for over 40 years... 46 years. 46 years. ...went to awaken him as usual. The bedroom was empty. And the bed unslept in. Quite so. She then went into the study where she found the Count dead upon the floor. Shot. What time is this? Half past eight. Oh, Mademoiselle came straight round to us, 
Uh, but of course, the office was not yet open. Why didn't she send for the police? The court belonged to the corps diplomatique. Mademoiselle has learned discretion. Was she too discreet to send for a doctor? There was no doubt that he was dead. Anyway, I suggest that we now go around there together. Your full name, mademoiselle? Jacquette Larieux. Jacquette Larieux. Address? 9 Rue Saint-Dominique. 9 Rue Saint-Dominique. Uh, you do understand that all possible discretion must be exercised. Why? Well, the Comte was, in his day, the repository of many state secrets. When did he retire? In 1938. Monsieur, I hardly think that he was killed because he knew what Deladier said to Chamberlain. But, Inspector, you don't understand. Not in the least. I'm just a police officer. Seventy-seven. Someone took the trouble to put three bullets into him. Four. The one in the head. Is there any possibility of suicide? No weapon? Did you touch anything? Nothing. Did you hear anything? Nothing. These were shut? Yes. Whose is the garden? It belonged to the Comte. He owned the whole house. But he didn't occupy it all, eh? No. After his father died in 1920, he converted the upper floors into apartments. It was the family mansion. He was born here. I wonder how many people in Paris today die in the houses they were born in. What are you doing? It is my duty to see that nothing of a confidential nature is left unguarded. In Luca, we must do our duty. Telephone headquarters, ask them to send a doctor, photographer, fingerprint boys. No, not that one. Be that clear. The concierge has one in her lodge. Thank you, mademoiselle. We shall want your prints, monsieur. Mine? As a check. And yours, mademoiselle. But I have a great deal of work to do. Perhaps your uh, man could call round at my office. Certainly. I can assure you the prince will be destroyed, provided you're not the murderer. Inspector, that is a remark in the very worst of taste. Yes, what a crude lot on our side of the river. It's the company we keep. Good morning. Manzel, have you a sheet? Si. Ah. They're on their way. Good. Looks as though the shot in the head was fired first. Yeah. They must have killed him. Why fire three more? Rage. Panic. Perhaps. Thank you, Mademoiselle. Take a look in the garden, Luca. For footprints? Or a gun. Did he own a gun? Yes. Where did he keep it? In the top right hand drawer. No gun. What sort was it? I don't know. Was it uh, black with a square barrel, or did it have a long barrel with a cylinder? That was the sort. A revolver. Now, mademoiselle, uh, will you tell me, please, where do you live here, sleep here? Yes, mm -hmm. through the kitchen. You do all the housework? And the cooking. How old do you say you were? 73. Mm. When did you last see the Count alive? At 10, last night. Nothing there. Uh. Was he wearing that dressing gown? Yes, he always wore it when he wasn't going out. Did he often go out? Sometimes, to the cinema. Not to friends? They were nearly all dead. What about relations? There was only his nephew, Monsieur Mazarin. Hmm. Does he know about this? No. It didn't occur to you to telephone him? No. Don't you like him? It's not my place to interfere in family matters. Didn't he get on with his uncle? I didn't say that. Where does he live? 12 Rue Jacob. Just around the corner. He keeps an antique shop. That'll be the local police. I'll let them in. 
Uh, you can't tell him what to do. I'm going around to see this, nephew. Dead? Shot? My uncle? This morning. Who would do that? A thief? There's no sign of any. Any enemies? Oh, no. Well, I don't think so. No. Is he rich? No, he had uh, some rents and his pension. Mm -hmm. Did you see much of him? He'd come here once or twice a week, walk around and talk about the old days. <laughs> of course, this stuff didn't really interest him much. It was too modern. Modern? Yes, his century was the 18th. He thought the Bonaparte's vulgar. This mm. was used at Austerlitz. Uh, what has Jacquette got to say about it? The housekeeper, nothing much. Could she have done it? Oh, no, surely not. I mean... What? She... Well, there's no real reason. For some reason? No, one couldn't say that. Hmm. She doesn't like you. She doesn't like anyone except Uncle Armand. She thinks anyone else is trying to supplant her. Do you think there was ever anything between them? Oh, I imagine so, yes. It's very awkward. More than that. But that should have happened today. It would have been just as awkward tomorrow. But today is the day of the funeral. Whose funeral? The Prince de Vivon. Hmm. Haven't you read the letters? Letters? Oh, good Lord, you don't know anything at all. <laughs> Hello? What are these? Medicines. Uh, enough of them. Was he ill? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Well, you don't get these from a doctor. These are the sort you get from a chemist. I'm not a chemist either. Allow me. Uh, mademoiselle? It is my duty to answer the door. Ah, uh -uh. you're not a policeman either. <laughs> They've been and gone? Yes. They were pretty quick. I've just been going through the desk. Meddling in what doesn't concern him. He used a lot of patent medicines. Mm. Is your uncle worried about his health? All old people are worried about their health. His doctor visited him regularly. Dr. Orgo. Now, these letters, where did he keep them? All his correspondence he kept in that cabinet. You've no right to open that. I have a duty to open it. Nothing in there has any bearing upon his death. Perhaps not, but he's dead. Traitor to your family. She doesn't understand yet. Is there a key to this? Uh, these were found in his pocket. Yes, maybe the one. <clears throat> As you say, letters. Oh, what are they going to tell me? Majority will be signed Easy. Easy, a woman? Isabel de Vivonne. De Vivonne? Oh, the Princess de Vivonne. That name was in the paper a couple of days ago. Mm. Uh, the day before yesterday, her husband, the Prince, died after a fall from his horse. In the Bois de Boulogne, wasn't it? And the funeral is today. Hmm. How old is the Princess? About uh, six years younger than my uncle. Seventy-one. Was she ever his mistress? I gather not. This letter goes back to 1912. The year of her marriage. Is this her? As she was, yes. Beautiful. Where does she live? Rue de Varenne. Rue de Varenne. That's just round the corner. Where do they write all these letters? They wrote to each other every day. Monsieur. Would you sit down, please? I think you'd better explain this whole thing to me from the beginning. The princess is a daughter of the Duke de saint Valery. Oh, yes, I learned about him at uh, the Lycée. About his great-great-grandfather, the Constable of France. Yes, well, uh, let's come to the present day. We have to start in 1910. That is when my uncle first met her. Mm. He was a young diplomat and they fell in love. Why didn't you marry him? Well, he hadn't much money. He was about to go to St. Petersburg as third secretary. And by the time he came back in 1912, she'd married the prince. Mm. But she didn't love him? Oh, no, it was an arranged marriage. Why did she agree? 
her duty to her father. It was a question of an alliance between two great families. Hmm. Was there a son? Yes, Philippe. Hmm. But she loved your uncle? Yes. And she went on loving him after she'd married the prince? Yes, as he loved her. Hmm. So there's just a possibility that the princess's son is not the prince's son? There is no possibility whatsoever. Why not? She was in love with my uncle. Yes, monsieur. I'm suggesting that he was your uncle's son. Oh, no. Why so certain? Because my uncle went to Tokyo in January 1914 and remained there until December 1918. The princess's child was born in October 1916. All right. But surely they must have met from time to time? He told me never. They were both strict Catholics and she did not think it would be right while the prince was alive. Oh. Now the prince is dead. Died two days ago in the Bois de Boulogne. Yes. So if your uncle was still alive, there would now be nothing to prevent him from meeting the princess. Or marrying. Hmm. Are you your uncle's heir? To the estate, yes. Jacquette has a pension out of it and the princess has his furniture. Did you shoot him? No. You don't seem very surprised at the question. Well, I knew that's what you were thinking when you asked me about the estate. Where were you last night, monsieur? Nowhere special. At home. Thank you, monsieur. <laughs> Pretty cool customer. Cool. Oh. Yes? No, hold on. For you. You agree? Yeah? No. No, no, no. Not yet. The press? Yeah. They're on to it. Are there any political implications? There aren't any implications at all, Lucar. The old man sitting here in his dressing gown. And the old woman's through there. Probably asleep. And whoever comes in is let in by the Count himself. Or has a key. Perhaps, either way, it's someone who knows him very well. He doesn't offer them a drink. I don't know. Well, fingerprints dusted this the moment they arrived. Only his prints on it. Cognac. There's a bottle in the cupboard. Mm. Well, perhaps the visitor refused a drink. Perhaps there wasn't even time to, uh, to offer one, after all. All we know for certain that whoever the visitor was put four bullets into the old man. And now we're involved with dukes and princesses and half the almanac de Gotha. Well, Morg, make right here. Yeah. Any news yet on the old man we sent you? No, 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 not a full report, just time of death, uh, type of bullet, so on. I see. Thank you very much. He died at around midnight. The first shot killed him, and all the bullets came from a 9 millimeter revolver. Probably his own. Yeah. But it also means that whoever shot him had time to pick up the empty cases afterwards, or we'd have found them. Doesn't sound like panic. No. Sounds more like hatred. Hmm. I wonder if the answer's in here. I picked up the nearest thing, this thing. I hit her with it, and then I don't know what happened then. You hit her another ten times with it. Dollars? Yes, Petron. You wait here. I haven't finished with you yet. Good man stalked. Yeah? What was it? Jealousy? So he says. Well, he should know. He was living on her earnings. Didn't make any difference? Nothing stops jealousy. Oh, I'll take a statement then. No, just a minute. My home number, please. Have La Pointe or somebody do that. Uh, I want you to relieve Luca. Right, that's all. Yeah. Yes, it's me. Sergeant Luca will be dining with us tonight. Hello, Doris. You happy? Bored. <laughs> well, I'm to take over. Good. And you ought to take the rest of the letters and go over to the Petrol's apartment. Oi, oi, I hope my friend Mademoiselle doesn't catch me. Oh, you've got a perfect right to take them. You try explaining that. Ah, Mademoiselle. Well, well, I was just talking about you. 
You can rest assured that the moment I start to do something I shouldn't, you will come along and catch me, eh? Never mind. You'll be pleased to see the last of the police, won't you? Well, that's a bad type, really, you know? It's been time to say au revoir. Uh, Torrance. May I introduce Mademoiselle Jacquette Larrier, Sergeant Torrance. Au revoir. Afternoon, Mademoiselle. If you wish to smoke, please ask me for an ashtray. Though why they allow you to do so on duty, I cannot imagine. And please tell the police officer at the entrance that I'm to be allowed to go out. Oh, well, where do you wish to go? To church. Which church? Saint Dominique. Oh, all right. It would do you no harm to accompany me. My duty forces me to remain here. Freemason. Andre! Oh, it's all right, you can go. Andre! Sergeant? You will accompany her. These look to be important official ones. These are some more personal ones. <coughs> Clemenceau's signature. Well, that should be the value to a collector. Mm. Poincare. Mm. President Wilson. Huh? Who was Ramsay MacDonald? Oh, some Englishman. Uh, mm. uh, well, it's the personal ones that really interest us. Uh, these are the early ones, yeah. Shall I read one? Yeah, read me, sir. Uh, this afternoon I had a long talk with Hubert. Her husband. Uh, no, no, her fiancé. She wasn't married then. Right. I was completely honest with him and told him that I love you, that too many obstacles stand in our way, and that in marrying him I'm obeying my father's wishes. I don't believe it. Huh? Must be the way you read. <laughs> yeah, you have a try. Mm -hmm. He has been wonderfully understanding and has promised that never in our marriage will he trespass upon that domain which is truly yours. Well, if that means what I think it means when you unwrap it, I don't see how the princess could have a son. I, for my part, have promised never to see you again. It's unbelievable. I think it's beautiful. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? After a day with Jacquette, I can believe anything. <laughs> it's like those awful novels your sister reads. <laughs> I see nothing wrong in fine sentiments. They're not fine. They're false. Nobody behaves like this. Well, if you want me to lay the table, you'll have to clear it. <laughs> Well, let's have some food. Good, honest food. Huh? I like this boulevard is mentioned. What? We shall in what? Yes. August 1914. Well, well, she watched her husband's regiment march down it to entrain for the front at the Gare uh, Vincennes. Can't read it quite. Yeah. When they were in the train, they allowed us on the platform and we waved goodbye to them. The soldiers looked so young and they sang metal on as the train drew out. He won a croix de guerre at the Chemin des Dames. Had an uncle killed there. His father was killed at our gun. Well, this will explain the son, Madame. You're better at this than I am. While Julien was alive, Hubert was not worried about the family name surviving, but now he feels it is his duty and mine to provide an heir to the princedom of Yvonne. But there is no princedom. I have spent the night in prayer and this morning consulted my spiritual advisor. He leaves me in no doubt as to where my duty lies. No, oh, no. God be praised, it's a boy. <laughs> the sacrifice was not in vain. <laughs> Well, I expect old Hubert prayed for a few daughters first. I think you're horrid. Yes, I am. Do you know why? All the unpleasant people you have to deal with. Murderers. And thieves and bad women. They feel as other people feel. These people aren't real. They're not true. Nobody believes them. Well, you can't be certain of that. Oh, yes, I can. These came from the morgue. Hmm? Four nickel-plated bullets. Now, 
The old man who was the recipient of all this high-flown sentiment was also the recipient of these. And whoever gave them to him knew him very well indeed. What year have you reached? 1926. The prince is consoling himself. With whom? Oh, she doesn't say. Simply poor H has a new infatuation and I think she's causing him trouble. He grows thinner every day. <laughs> I know what she means. <laughs> she's worried about the count in this one. He's in Cuba. I know the women are beautiful and I'm so far away. I tremble at the thought that one day you might fall in love. Mm. Mm. Uh, she talks a lot about her son. Says he looks just like the Count. Ah, oh, that's absurd. And she says it's miraculous. <laughs> well, I should be seeing her tomorrow. <laughs> hey, you'd better go and get a taxi down to the Bastille. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. It's been a long day, hmm? Oh, um, will you thank Madame again for a really excellent meal? You've earned it, Luca. And uh, don't let all this give you indigestion. <laughs> good night, Breton. Thank you, Luca. I thought you were asleep. No, I, oh, I woke up when Luca went. Uh. Oh. Boils. What? He had boils in Buenos Aires in 1932. Oh. She worried about him. Well, of course. I worry about you. Well, you're my wife. Be nice to her when you see her. Wouldn't I be? You were angry. Well, I'm not at home with this. Religion, honor, family name. It doesn't tie up with murder. And besides... What? I haven't met a woman like this since I was a child. When I went up to the chateau with my father, to see the old Countess of saint fiacre she'd summon me into the salon and give me a chocolate. <laughs> Tomorrow I shall feel as if I'm in shorts again. <laughs> You want me to stay? No. You'd better wait next door in case he wants you. Why should you want me? You are the Prince de Vivonne. But I know nothing of Armand's death. Of course not. But he may want you to tell him so. Go along now, otherwise I shall have to introduce you and then he won't know which of us to question. Inspector Maigret of the Criminal Justice Department. Thank you. Chief Inspector. Well. Will you sit down? Thank you. This is most shocking news about Armand de Saint Alaire. When did you hear it, madame? This morning. His nephew, Alain Mazarin, telephoned me. Apparently, he didn't like to tell me yesterday because of my husband's funeral. Has Armand been taken to the morgue? Yes. I should like to see him. Can you arrange that? It can be arranged. Did he suffer? He was killed outright. In his study? Yes. Sitting at his desk? Correcting the proofs of his book. If I might ask a question, madame? Of course. Have you ever been to his house? Once, when he was out. Jacquette let me in. It was naughty, but I wanted to be able to see him against his background. I suppose you read my letters to him? Oh, yes. Would you like to read his to me? Not at the moment, thank you. Are there as many? Quite as many. One a day during the last few years. Did you receive one yesterday morning? No. I didn't expect one until after the funeral. It would have been lacking in tact. Yeah. <clears throat> what 
would your uh, future relationships have been? We should have married as soon as I was out of mourning. Would his nephew have minded? Alan Maserol. <laughs> he expected it. His inheritance would not have been affected. And uh, Jacquette? She looked forward to it. Are you sure she wasn't uh, jealous? Not of me. Of other women, yes. Do you think she was ever... His mistress? Mm. Certainly. Well, he told me so. In a letter? Why not? You didn't mind? Oh, no. That meant nothing. Uh, and now? Well, now, we are old. Mm. Uh, did your son know that you intended to remarry her? Everyone knew. How did he feel about it? You can ask him if you like. He's in the next room. Uh, thank you, if I may. I'll call him. Uh, just one more question, madame. Where were you the night before last? Here. Alone? Except for the servants, the doctor, a priest, two nuns. And, of course, Hubert's body. Philippe! The inspector would like to speak to you. Offer him a glass of port. If you want me again, inspector, ring for the butler. No, thank you. Cigarette? Uh, no, I only smoke a pipe. Oh, so do I. Except here. Mm. You don't live here? Mm. Uh, Lord, no. I have an estate in Normandy. We've only come up for the funeral. You and your wife? And the children. How many? Six. All here? No, no, we're staying at the Creon. Mm. Mama can't stand the children. The noise and the mess, you know. As a matter of fact, the Creon don't care for them either. Uh, did you know that your mother intended to remarry? Yes. And How did you feel about it? I didn't mind. Hmm. Did anyone mind? Uh, my uh, wife thought it was a bit of a come down, dropping a rank. I don't see that it matters, myself. I wish I could get back to Normandy. Though. Hay is all ready to get in. Where were you the night before last, monsieur? The night before last? Oh, when saint Hilaire died. Well, here, till about ten. And then? My wife and I went back to the hotel. Yeah. My wife went to bed. And you? I went for a walk. Where? Champs-Élysées. Till when? Oh, till about half past twelve. A long walk? Yes. Up and down the Champs-Élysées? Uh, more or less. I suppose I ought to tell you the truth. You ought. Well, you see, um, living down in Normandy, it's very much in the country, it's a small place, everyone knows you, and you can't... Well, you can't do anything without everyone knowing, so when I come up to Paris, I relax a bit. Her name, monsieur? Veronique. A description? Dark, small. Said she came from Lille. Mm -hmm. She lived in an hotel in the Rue de Berry. Thank you, monsieur. We'll check that. So I'd uh, rather my wife didn't know. Oh, naturally. She wouldn't understand a girl like that with an accent. You see, uh, my wife's a little bit of a snob. No, no, nothing, no. You can't. I've got the pathologist's report. According to him, the Count was in very good health for a man of his age. Hmm. And the only fingerprints in his room were his own and Jacquette's. That's all. I checked on that girl you phoned about, Veronique Blanchard. She remembers the man you described. She would. Now, how is the princess? Honest and with a watertight alibi. Now it looks as if her son has got one, too. That leaves any Mazarin and Jacquette who knew him well. Oh, that Jacquette's a tartar. <laughs> yes, and a jealous one, but... I don't think she's ever fired a gun in her life. Well, we can always find out. We could? How? Yes, there's that test they do down the technical branch. With the paraffin wax, huh? Every revolver fired leaves traces of powder on the firer's fingers. Now cover the fingers with wax, peel it off, and you find the traces of powder on the wax, provided mm. you do it soon enough. Well, then, let's do it. Get on to Moors or someone. Time to go all around all of them. But mind you, it only proves that they fired a revolver. Well, that's all right. 
That's enough. What has this family got to do with firearms? Alain Mazarin sells them. Yes, he does indeed. Uh, shall we start with him? No, finish with him. I think I'll have another word with him. He might tell me a lie. May I put on my rings? Yes, madame. Quite fascinating. I feel like a criminal. Am I one? I don't think so, madame. You were lucky to find me in. I've been at an auction at the Hotel Drouot this morning. Not a bad little collection. Mostly Imperial Guard. Mr. Mazarin, do you have a gun? Plenty of guns, yes. There's a musket from the field of Waterloo. No, I mean a revolver. <laughs> Nothing modern. I don't deal in modern weapons at all. Uh, here's a nice little pair of dueling pistols. Have you fired a pistol recently? Oh, yes. You have? Yeah, it's one of these, as a matter of fact. I bought them at a sale a few days ago. I was cleaning this one and it went off. It must have been left loaded for a hundred years or more. Where's the bullet? In the ceiling. <laughs> you wouldn't think it could happen, would you? But it does quite often. I dare say they're in a hurry to pack them away and nobody realized it hadn't been fired. Well, they wouldn't, you see, because they generally fired together in these affairs of honor. This was the losers. Mm. Alain Mazarin? Yes, he is. That's for you. Thank you. Maigret? Yes, Lucas? We've carried out the test on Mademoiselle Jacquette Larieux. I'm very much afraid it was positive. Yes, positive. No, no, she's definitely fired a revolver within the last 48 hours. <laughs> You can bring up an armchair. Thank you, Thomas. I have here a warrant for your provisional arrest. We will be charged with the murder of your employer based on information received from the test just carried out by our technical branch. Have you anything to say? We know that you fired a revolver recently. Where is it now? In the Seine? Well, we shall find it. Now, would you like to tell me what happened? Or shall I tell you? Oh, well. This is what I think happened. You gave the greater part of your life in the service of the Count, and the two of you were as close as any two people can be. You didn't mind him writing to the Princess. But it was a very different matter when, quite suddenly, she was in a position to marry him. You saw yourself no longer a housekeeper, but a servant. The night before last, after a, let's say, a nervous crisis, a quarrel, perhaps, you took his own revolver and you shot him. You then disposed of the revolver and you waited until morning before reporting the murder. Would you prefer mineral water to beer? I'm not thirsty or hungry. Well, you will be because you're going to stay here till you, till you talk. I never eat meat. Tarrance, order some cheese sandwiches. There's no point. I eat very little. The old don't need much food. You have nothing to fear, Jacquette, mademoiselle. Your emotional state will be taken into consideration. Would you rather speak to me alone? Would you like a lawyer? Shall we get you a lawyer? Or the Princess de Vivon? No. You realize that other people have been suspected because of your silence and may still be suspected. That's all. There's a boy in the waiting room who wants to see you. I don't want to see anyone. Send him away. He's connected with the case. Julien de Vivon. Who's he? The new prince's son? His eldest son. Ah. Yes, well, I would like to ask him some questions. I'll take Mademoiselle next door. What is it? I would like to see a priest. To confess? For advice. The Abbe Barreau. 
of St. Dominique is my spiritual advisor. The number of the presbytery? Abalique, 2896. Mm-hmm. Take Mademoiselle next door. Hello. Father Barrow. Yeah, Chief Inspector Maigret, Quai des Orfèvres. One of your parishioners, Mademoiselle Larrieux, is in need of your help. Could you take a taxi and come round at once? Thank you. Pia. Well, she's not giving much away, is she? We've had some tough cases in here, but that old woman's the toughest of the lot. If she doesn't want to talk, she'll never talk. All right, let's see this boy. Monsieur? Miss Wayfield. I'm sorry if I seemed impatient, but I've got a lecture in half an hour. Mm-hmm. Glass of beer? Oh, no, thanks. Well, now. I missed you at my grandmother's, otherwise I would have told you then. It's about the last time I visited my Uncle Armand. Uncle Armand? Well, that's what I called him. Oh, you knew him well. Yes, I met him at a friend's house at a reception, mm-hmm. and he asked me to visit him. Uh, did your grandmother, the princess, know? No. She told me all about him and even showed me some of his letters. Oh, not only the ones about politics. He wrote very well. Hmm. Do your parents know? Nobody knew. Except Jacquette. Oh, of course she let me in. But she's very discreet. She is. You see, there was no real harm in our being friends, but Uncle Armour felt that my grandfather might find it lacking in tact. Hmm. How often did you go there? Once or twice a week. Since when? About 18 months ago. When was the last time? The day before he died. After your grandfather's death? Huh? I told him the news. Hmm. What did he say? Uh, you knew that he was hoping to marry your grandmother? Yes. And what did he say? He was upset. At the death? It was sudden. Hmm. Did you worry him? In a way. He seemed afraid. Of whom? I don't know. But he said something like, it won't be allowed. Won't be allowed. Can you remember the exact word? I'm trying to. I said, I suppose you'll marry Meme after her year's mourning is over. And he said, no. No, after all these years of waiting, I'm not going to be allowed to do that. Nothing more? Nothing. Hmm, what time of day was this? Early evening. Well, thank you very much. I don't know if it helps. <laughs> Just to see somebody young on this case is a help. Don't be late for your lecture. Thank you. Thank you. That's more than Jacquette told us. I wonder what it meant. The priest here. What's he like? Well, he's the eldest of the lot. Well, at least he was quick. It's not far. It's a thousand kilometers, Lucas, and five hundred years. What's going on out there? Talk. No, oh, it's more than she's doing here. Yes. Hmm. May I? Yes, come in, of course, Father. Jacquette. Right there. Uh, clear the tray, Tom. Mademoiselle wished to consult me on a delicate point of conscience. Mm. I can't give her a complete answer, but I have persuaded her to tell you all she knows. You've been more successful than I have. Well, it was in my province rather than yours. She was afraid the Count would not receive a Christian burial, so she was not going to talk until after the funeral. It was suicide? Yes. Tell them, Jacquette. Tell them the truth. I was asleep, and the shot woke me up. And... and... You went into the room and found the Count dead. With this... Awful wound. Where was the revolver? On the floor beside him. What did you do? I fetched the looking glass from my bedroom and held it in front of his mouth. He was dead? Yes. And I thought of the disgrace and how they would bury him, like... like a heathen. So I thought I'd make it look as if somebody else had done it. Only until after the funeral. That was all I wanted for him. He 
he was such a good man. We may be able to assume repentance even at the final instant. Tell me the rest. I picked up the pistol and fired it again and again without looking. Then I took it out and threw it into the river with the empty cartridges. Where? Pont de la Concorde, somewhere near the middle. Why did the Count shoot himself? He had pain. He was afraid. He thought he was malignant. But the doctor said he was in exceptionally good health. His own doctor told him that, but he wouldn't believe him. He would buy all those patent medicines, hoping they would do him some good. But they only made him feel worse. Poor man. He thought he was malignant. You may go. I have done wrong. Yes. You've committed at least three offences, all of them serious. But I don't think you'll commit them again. How was that? What'll we do with the fire? Close it. Nothing in it? Nope. Nothing at all. Well, just to round off the day, here's the report on that cafe shooting yesterday. The man says the girl was drunk and he was sober. The girl says she was sober and he was smoking reefers. What did the uh, barman they shot at say? He says they must have both been drunk or they'd have hit him. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief Inspector. Well then? We are sorry to come so late, but we felt we should place this information in front of you. We know that the Count committed suicide. This will explain the reason. We know the reason. I hardly think so. Hmm? My dear, easy. You'll excuse me, I'm sure. Well, may I keep this for a few moments? For as long as you like. My dear, easy. I have felt for some months that there is a very short time left to me. I cannot bear to think of you after all our years of courtship, marrying at last a dying man. And rather than present you with such a sorry anticlimax, I'm writing this one last letter. I've addressed it to my lawyer, who is instructed to pass it to you. My love, you know you have. And that, at least, can never die. Good night, dear Easy. Um. Hmm, I might have known. It couldn't have been anything as simple as fear. Not with those people. Hmm. Well, Luca, let's go and get some beer, find some real criminal. <laughs> <laughs> 